Hey there, ready to dive into some pretty interesting investor behavior. We always hear that investors like to avoid risk when interest rates are rising, but this new research paper, well, it kind of suggests something different. Yeah, this paper really does. It's called Reaching for Beta, and uh, it kind of turns what we thought we knew on its head. It does, and it looks at mutual fund data from 1995 all the way to 2020. We're talking holdings, transactions, all that good stuff. It uses both quarterly data and daily records, so we're really getting into the weeds here with this paper. But let's take a step back. What exactly is Reaching for Beta? Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Well, think of beta as like, you know, measuring how volatile a stock is compared to the overall market. So like a high beta stock, that means it's going to have some pretty big price swings, you know, up and down. So reaching for beta is like when these fund managers, they start increasing their portfolio's average beta. Basically, they're buying riskier stocks when rates are going up. So that's kind of wild, right? Because it's almost the opposite of what you'd expect. You always hear about like people reaching for yield in low rate environments. Mm not reaching for risk when rates are going up. Yeah, you're right. There is a difference. Reaching for yield, that's all about trying to get the highest return you can, and that's often with fixed income. But this reaching for beta, this is all about using that market volatility to try and do better than everybody else, especially when those safe, risk-free returns, those are already higher. Okay, so let's say rates go up. What did the researchers actually find out about these mutual funds? What do they do? Well, they found out that funds do increase their beta exposure after, particularly after the Fed raises rates. And it's not just a quick thing either. This change can actually last up to an entire year. And it shows up, well, it shows up both in their long-term holdings and also even their short-term trading. And here's something. These funds, they actually do get higher returns. There's got to be a catch, right? Yeah. These higher returns, they don't actually mean that these funds are beating the market once you factor in all that extra risk that they're taking on. So it's like they're getting a boost, a temporary boost, just because the market's going up, not because they're actually good at picking stocks. Exactly. But here's where things get really interesting. Even though this is happening, these funds that reach for beta, well, they actually end up getting more money from investors when rates are higher. Wait, so investors are, they're putting more money in even though the funds aren't really beating the market. I'm not sure I'm following that. Yeah, it is kind of a puzzle. Maybe maybe a lot of investors, they don't really get the difference between these, you know, raw returns versus returns that are adjusted for risk. You know, they're just seeing the higher numbers and uh, jumping in. So are these investors, are they're basically rewarding risky strategies, even if those strategies aren't actually producing good returns? It does seem that way. I mean, it's also possible that investors are just, you know, m- more okay with taking risks when the market is doing well, which, you know, often happens when rates are going up. It's like everybody's feeling good, so yeah. <laughs> they mind a little extra risk, right? But this can't all be happening without impacting the market as a whole. Right. Yeah, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. This behavior, it does have some ripple effects. So these researchers, they looked into how this whole reaching for beta thing, how it impacts stock prices and Well, they came up with this really interesting measure. They called it beta-induced trading, or uh, BIT for short. Good, BIT. So break that down for me. What is beta-induced trading, and how does it actually affect the market? So basically, BIT, it measures how much these funds are buying certain stocks just because they're trying to get that higher beta. It's not because anything about the company itself changed. It's just they want that beta. So they're kind of like disproportionately buying certain stocks just because those stocks are going to be more volatile, even if, you know, the companies themselves are doing the exact same thing. Yeah, exactly. And what they found is that this BIT, it actually does push those stock prices up, at least for a while. But then eventually that effect goes away. So it's like a quick sugar rush. You know, the price goes up for a bit. 
just because of demand, not because the company's actually worth more. You got it. And that's a really important takeaway here. This whole reaching for beta thing, it can really mess with the market, making prices go up or down in ways that don't really reflect the true value of the company. Yeah, that is a little unsettling. I mean, if those prices are going up just because people are buying them and not because the company's better, then at some point those prices should go back down, right? Exactly. And that's why, you know, this whole chasing beta thing, it might not be the best strategy for investors in the long run. It's not really, you know, based on skill or anything. It's really fascinating. We've talked about what it is, mm. how it works, but what about the why? Why are these fund managers, why are they so focused on getting this beta? And why are investors giving them more money to do it? Well, part of it might be, you know, the incentives that these fund managers have. They're often judged based on how they do in the short term. And reaching for beta, well, that can give them a quick boost in their returns, even if it doesn't last. And then you have investors who are attracted to those higher returns and they put in more money, which just encourages this whole cycle to continue. It's like a vicious cycle then. Yeah. But is there anything that, you know, the average investor can do to avoid falling into this trap? I think just being aware of this is a big step, you know, understanding that those fund managers, they have their own goals and those goals, well, they don't always match up with yours. And don't just get, you know, dazzled by those high returns. You got to look deeper than that. So what kinds of questions should I be asking, you know, either myself or even my financial advisor to make sure I'm not getting caught up in all this? Well, ask about how the fund is managing risk. You know, how are they approaching this whole beta thing? And I think really the most important thing is to ask yourself if that approach matches up with your own risk tolerance and your goals. Right, because not everyone has the same comfort level with risk, right? Right. What one person finds exciting, another person might find terrifying. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to understand this whole reaching for beta thing. It helps you make the best decisions for you and not just follow what everyone else is doing. This has been really insightful. So to sum things up, what are the main things that our listeners should remember? I think the big one is that you can't just look at a fund's returns. You got to look at those risk adjusted returns. Those are the ones that take into account all that extra risk they're taking. And if you see a fund and they're suddenly buying up all these high beta stocks right when rates are going up, well, that might be a sign to be a little cautious. That's great advice. It's a good reminder that knowledge is power, especially when it comes to investing. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into reaching for beta for today. We covered a lot of ground today, but uh, this conversation has me thinking about some of the bigger picture stuff. Yeah, for sure. This research definitely raises some interesting questions about how the market works. Like, for example, if this whole reaching for beta thing, if it can really inflate stock prices, you know, create these like little mini bubbles, what does that mean for other investors? Does that create any opportunities? That's a really good point. You know, it kind of suggests that there might be some advantages for those investors who are more focused on, you know, long term value, the ones who aren't chasing those short term gains. So while some people are you know, running around trying to get those high returns from these high beta stocks, other investors could actually find some really good deals that are being overlooked in all the chaos. Exactly. You know, it really highlights how important it is to have a solid investment strategy and stick to it, even when the market is, you know, going a little crazy. This whole discussion really makes you realize that you have to understand what's happening in the market, all the forces at play, both the rational and the irrational ones, if you want to make good investment decisions. I couldn't agree more. It's not just about picking the right stocks. It's about understanding the bigger picture, seeing how all these different strategies play out. Well said. On that note, we'll leave you with one final thought to consider. If this reaching for beta thing, if it's really distorting prices in the short term, what happens when that demand disappears? You know, it has to disappear at some point. Could that create some opportunities for investors who are patient and disciplined? What do you think? As always, we encourage you to keep learning and keep asking good questions. That's what the deep dive is all about. Until next time, happy investing, everybody. Mm -hmm.